Welcome back to Extra Inch Education Tutorials. This video is about using pivot tables. You may be worried and think this will be complicated, but the truth is that pivot tables are very easy to use and don't require any complex formulas. If you complete watching this video, then you will be professional in the basics of using pivot tables and you will have the ability to create reports faster. So, let's start. Let me start with an example here for better understanding. Let's say you was given a giant sheet of data, and your boss challenged you to turn this data into a summary report in short time. This when using pivot tables become necessary, and that's what we will learn at this video. If you have this set of data to use to create our pivot tables, this will be considered our source data. And before you start building a pivot table, you should be familiar with source data especially if you haven't seen it before. So, this data was generated from our system and it contains order details and some customer information. As I scroll over, we can see information about sales presentative, product shipment details, information about payments and revenue. The important thing you want to do is make sure that your data is in a tabular format and that's mean you have row of headers here at the top of the data set and each of these headers describes the column of data below. The other things you want to look out for is that you want to make sure there's no blank columns within your header row here and no blank rows within your data set, also want to look out for merged cells. So, once your data looks good, we will go to the Insert tab on the ribbon, and then click the Pivot Table button. That will bring up this Create Pivot Table window, and basically it's asking us to select the table or range. Now you can see that Excel automatically detected the range for us, and that's because I had a cell selected inside the data set. If Excel doesn't detect it then you can just click this blue button over here and go and select your range. But there is one thing we need to know here. If I add more lines or data to this table, they will not be considered in my end report. And I will have to update my range, and I'd rather avoid this step. So, what I need to do before I insert a pivot table? I need to turn my data set into an official Excel table. This has the added advantage that, whenever I get new data added, my pivot tables will automatically reflect that the moment I press refresh. And all I have to do is, click on this button here which called table. Excel figures out that this table has headers, you can go with OK. You can go and change the table format from here, and just select None. You can change your table name from here, so that you can recognize it later on. Now that we have a table, we go back to Insert and click on Pivot Table. Now notice that we get the name of our table here as a range. So as our table expands with new data, they will automatically be included in our pivot table. The next step is that we want to choose where we're going to put the pivot table, in this case we'll put it on a new worksheet, so I'll go ahead and click OK. And now you'll see that, Excel automatically added a new sheet to our workbook here, and created this pivot table area. You'll also notice over on the right side that this pivot table fields list has appeared, and this is basically the window we're going to use to create the pivot table. So, here's all a list of all the fields in our data set, and then down below is the areas that we can dress those fields into, to create a pivot table report. On the other side, there is an option you can select here to have more space for your fields here, you can go and select field section and area section side by side. So, the first thing I'm going to do is to find sales presentative field and then drag that into the rows area of the pivot table and drop it there. Now you will notice that the pivot table is listing our sales presentative in the rows area of the pivot table. So each row contains a sales presentative name now. Next, I want to add the revenue to this report as well, so I can get a summary of revenue. So I'm going to find this revenue field here, and then drag it into the values area of the pivot table. When I drag it into the values area and drop it there, you'll notice that Excel has automatically calculated the sum of revenue for each sales presentative. This really shows the power and magic of the pivot table, it can calculate the sum of revenue for each presentative, just almost instantly as we drag the field into the values area. Now let's take an idea how pivot table works, to get an understanding of what actually happens there. So here we can see Elijah Brown has sales of $280,027 here in the pivot table. So basically, what the pivot table has done. Let's go back to the data source, and I'm going to filter the sales representative field here for Elijah Brown, so we're just seeing the sales that Elijah Brown done. And you can see here that he's done 14 sales during last year. 
Now if I go over to the rows column, and I'm just going to select these revenue numbers here you can see here's our sum of revenue $280,027 for Elijah, so basically the pivot table has done this filter and calculation for us. It's basically filtered the data set for each representative, and then calculated the sum of revenue. So, this is a very powerful tool, because with just a few clicks you can see that we've automatically created this nice summary report from our data set. Okay, so let's continue building out our pivot table. Probably the first thing you'll notice, is that these numbers are not formatted, when we drug the revenue field into the values area, it did not format those numbers, so we want to format those, and the easiest way to do that, is we just right click on any cell in the values area there, and then go to value field settings. That will bring up this value field settings, for the revenue field sum of revenue, and we're going to click on the number format button, that'll bring up the format cells dialog which you're probably familiar with. I'm just going to choose currency, no decimals, click OK, and then click OK here, and you can see now that our numbers are formatted. The next thing I'm going to do is sort this information. So I want to put the top performing representative at the top of the list here, so basically, I'm just going to select any cell in the values area and right click, and then go to sort, and sort largest to smallest. And now that's sorted our list here from largest to smallest, so we can see our top performing representative which is Liam at the top of the list, and then our bottom performing representative which is Lucas down at the bottom. Now this gives us some really good information, we can kind of see who's doing well, and maybe who struggled this year or for some reason didn't do as well. Now, I'm going to clear out this report, and to delete fields out of your pivot table. You can go over here to the pivot table field list and just left click, and drag them out of the area, until you see that X shape next to the mouse icon. And then let go. Now I want to see a report that shows my sales by country, so now I want to add the country into my pivot table, drag it into the rows area and drag the revenue at the value here. And I also want to sort this, so I'm going to right click here go to sort largest to the smallest, and after that I will change the cells format. So now we can quickly see that China sales is more than other countries. Now I want to show you some different calculation types that the pivot table can do, because so far, we've only been dealing with the sum of revenue. So now I want to start answering some more questions about my country sales so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the unit price here in the values area and that's going to give me a sum of unit price which actually useless calculation as we have different products within these areas. What I actually want is to see the average unit price so I'm going to right click here, go to value field settings and now from this window there's some different metric options and I'm going to calculate the average instead of the sum so I'm just going to click average and click OK and now that's showing us the average unit price and we can see that for China, our average unit price around $19,155. Now we can take the quantity field and put it in the values area. And now we have a sum of quantities of sell at each country. And of course, we can see here that we sold 129 products at China. And that's just about the highest out of all the countries. The other thing that might be interesting is to know how many orders we sold for each of these countries. So again, I'm going to take the quantity field and drag it into the values area. And instead of some, I actually want the count. So I'm going to go to value field settings, and now I'm going to choose count from this list, hit OK, and so now that's showing me the count of orders, or the count of rows in my data set. Now I want to show you another kind of calculations. I'm going to remove these fields here. And I'm just going to keep the revenue. Sometimes you may ask the question, since we have a revenue sum of $383,204 for China, what is that as a percentage of our total revenue? And you can quickly answer that with a pivot table. So I'm going to add our revenue field into the values area again. And that just created some of revenue this time. I'm going to right click, go to value field settings and show values as this tab here. And now we're going to choose calculation as a percentage of grand total. Click OK. And you can see now that's automatically created that calculation percentage of grand total. So we can now see that China sales makes up almost 23% of our revenue. Another question you might ask. Who's selling in these categories? And we can quickly answer that as well. So if I find my sales presentative field here, I'm just going to drag it into the rows area. And now that automatically added our sales presentative. It's basically lists all the sales presentative that is sold in these specific countries. And this again provides some interesting metrics. Another interesting way to look at this is that I'm going to take the sum of revenue out of the pivot table. And now I'm going to put sales presentative over in columns here. And that's will list each of our sales presentative across the top here of the pivot table. That's all of our sales presentative, so now you can kind of see which sales presentative are selling in each country. Okay, so my pivot tables are done. But I just want to show you one thing before we wrap up. 
and that's how easy it is to add slicer buttons to your pivot table. So, for example, let's add our product names as a slicer. So, while it's in the country list, you can right mouse click and add a slicer. And it adds these buttons here that you can organize anywhere you want. And when you click on it, it filters your report to show the values in your slicer. Now, for your slicer you also get slicer options here, so you can update the design for this. Hopefully now you have seen the power of the pivot table, and it's not really that scary of an item, it's actually very easy to use and extremely powerful, and it allows you to quickly summarize and visualize your information. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. See you at next video.